Okay, guys, so this next step is really, really critical with uh, applying a little bit of more of compression, delay, and reverb. As you guys can see, we didn't do too much as in wet reverb or delay, if anything. So with that being said, going into this step of bussing and sending, we want to make sure our vocal is still dry, but now it's wrapped in a little bit of processing. You know, we went through our compressor, we, we did our frequency and finding our resonance and all that stuff, and then we balanced it out with JJP and gave it that more presence. Digging back into the JJP, you guys will notice this space. That is pretty much a reverb or almost a delay function within this plugin that's kind of giving it a little bit of a wet value. If you can hear when I crank this up, you'll hear that wet and dry kind of difference. I can't keep to myself. So with that being said, going into this bus and sending step, we do not want this on because then you will be doubling up your effects, essentially having too much reverb, too much delay. Essentially, it's the same idea if you're stacking tons of saws, saw waves with a synth, you're kind of going to get that, that phasing effect and overlapping. You don't want that with effects also. So we're going to shut the space function off. I can't keep lying to so it's pretty much full dry, right? That's really where you want to be in this stage. I don't really, you know, realistically put reverb and delay on my channel strip here going into it. I bus and send values, amounts to a reverb and to a delay, to compression, et cetera, to get kind of that sitting in the back of the vocal, especially all these Sony's, Sony tracks and radio tracks that I've been writing. I'm a writer that works with these companies, so I'm kind of evolved in around pop songs. And again, as I said earlier, the the vocal needs to be up front, so keep that in mind with bussing and sending. First thing I'm gonna do is open up Reverb, and I'm gonna use my Space Designer inside Logic, and I'm gonna use a preset. If you guys, I'll show you this one, it's a short plate. You guys could also use something like Valhalla. There's a lot of really good reverbs, so don't, you know, don't sweat that you guys don't have this if you're not a Logic user. Basically, just look at my length and my pre-delay. It's a really short plate, overall, kind of a short plate reverb. And I got this wet all the way here. So now we're going to kind of hear a track of itself in the back of the vocal. If you guys notice, if I open this up, it's going to be a track of itself. Now you could call this the reverb vocal. If we solo that, and we got to bring this up. I can't now the cool thing with busting and setting guys, you gotta remember, you're creating more tracks. You are essentially creating another stem. That's pretty much what it is. It's a ghost stem sitting in the back of your main vocal lead. So remember to make this a, in your arrangement as a, you know, as a stem so you can control volume. You gotta control stuff just as if it were a synth, a bass, et cetera, anything. So I'm gonna also treat that the same as everything else. I need to EQ that reverb also because it's going to kind of bottle up and be too much for the vocal. You got to treat it as its own track. I can't keep lying to my... And that's way too wet, so we'll go back here and we'll dial that back down. I can't keep lying to myself. I don't want you. You want it to be really subtle in the background. That's sounding good. I'm rolling off my lows. I don't need any lows in the reverb. I can't keep lying to myself. I don't want you. I need you. Nobody. And I usually always roll off my high end on my reverb sense because I want the crisp kind of tone and high end of the lead vocal, kind of that dry stem, to be coming through dry. You don't want too much else going on around it. I can't keep lying to myself. I don't want you, I need you, nobody else. So let's now apply a little more reverb. All right, sorry, compression. Let's gonna go back to that vintage again. This is gonna kind of push a little bit more of the vocal in the back, just a touch, as you'll see when I bring this up. Let me bring the threshold pretty high. I can't keep lying to myself. Don't want you. And again, control it as it's its own track. We need to mix this compressor, send back down. I can't keep lying to myself. I don't want you. You guys can see how much that compressor is working. I also use an API here, 2500, or even the CLA 2A from Waves is a great possibility here. You guys are, I'm sure all of you are Wave users. Use that here also. It's a great vintage compressor that's hardware that really can bring out the vocal a little bit more here. We're going to go to a little bit of delay, bring this up, and I'm going to use FabFilter's Timeless. It's a great delay. And I'm just going to apply a subtle amount. I'm not a huge delay guy because I 
I think it gives too much echo to the vocal. I prefer vocals that are really kind of dry in the mix and don't have too much going on. I can't keep lying to myself. I don't want you. I need you. No. So you guys can hear when I stop, there's a little bit going on. Usually I will roll off a little bit and control the actual EQ of the delay. I actually usually do that in here with EQ. You can use Fab Filter, kind of the same idea I did with the reverb. I don't want too much going on. I just want enough to give a little bit more body and a little bit more width, you could say, to the vocal. And I'm gonna offset the delays so that it's gonna create a stereo delay left and right. I can't keep lying to myself. I don't want you, I need you, nobody else. Really subtle difference there. But these little details are giving that bus sending. It's giving that backtrack or that backing to the vocal that it needs to be wrapped. You guys could essentially think of it that it's being wrapped with effects, right? If you're putting the effects on the channel strip on top, it's basically sandwiching that vocal down in the mix because you are putting all the effects on top. If you're bussing and sending, you're putting the effects in the back where they belong. Remember to keep that vocal dead up front and really kind of have that pop to it and come through the mix. I can't keep lying to myself. So you guys might think I'm crazy putting a bit crusher on here. This is something I've done forever. I like giving that tiny bit of crunch. You guys also could use a distortion plug in here if you want. This is just gonna give a tiny bit more character to it. I can't keep lying to myself. I don't want you, I need you, nobody else. I can't keep lying to myself. I don't want you. See how it's getting that raspiness to it? That's really cool. That's something to kind of make your vocals unique, especially if you're kind of doing a more of a guitar edge track, something a little more attitude. If you can really get a nice raspiness to it. I can't keep lying to myself. I'm going to put on an echo and kind of double up, give a little bit more of a reflection here. Put it on 16th. I can't keep lying to myself. I don't want you. I need you. Now this one you got to be really subtle with the amount uh, you're sending here. It's giving that double up effect, obviously a 16th rate. So you don't want to go overload. You're going to create kind of a reflection type thing and you could ruin the vocal. This is just for those spaces where the vocalist is not singing. This is going to fill it up very, very subtle. I can't keep lying to myself. I don't want you. I need you. Nobody. So let's shut those bus off now. You guys can hear the difference. I can't keep lying to myself. I don't want you. I need you. Nobody else. I can't keep lying to myself. I don't want you, I need you, nobody else. I'm gonna bring that down. We're starting to kind of peak there a little bit. I can't keep lying to myself. Lastly, I'm gonna put on a CLA 2A that I was talking about. You guys can kind of flip um, between different compressors that you work with that you kind of love because they all have different kind of characters to them, right? So keep that in mind that you don't always have to follow what every compressor, uh, every producer uses. There's, there's, it's not a certain formula. It's a style that you're working with in your genre. Um, it could be different than what I'm working with and I'm doing more pop dance. If you're doing something a little more trap or electro driven, you might want to do a different compressor. I'm just going to kind of cut it at the end here and tame it off just as I did here. I can't keep lying to myself. I don't want you. I need you. Nobody else. I can't keep lying to myself. I don't want you. It's giving that little bit of vintage warmth analog that I keep talking about, guys. It's so, you know, a lot of things I'm doing is like that one to two percent difference. But if you listen to it overall and what it's doing and, and the value it's bringing, it's a massive amount of difference from the original vocal. Now, this reverb send, it could be different from you. It could be less, could be more, right? So keep in mind, you got to really dial these parameters in due to the genre you're working in. A trance record gonna be really wet. A pop record, pretty much super dry and not too much like I have here. Let's get to the next step.